expression of Vietnam veteran and Military Officer Association of America. Juan Rosado, President, Chapter 398, Arecibo BBA. Martin Santiago, representing the U.S. Navy and Military Officers Association of America. We're going to take care of Peter Perez. Um, I'm military or World War II commander. Angel Aponte, I represent the Military Order of the Purple Heart, San Juan Chapter. Angel P. Rosa Rosa, 65 Infanteria, the Mauritaneers. Thank you all uh, for being here. So let's begin. Remember that we're going to have have a three minute uh, remarks from each uh, recognized organization uh, that will give us through time to go to the hearing. Uh, so that's the reason we need to you know, comply with that uh, three minutes, but if you want to submit any written statement, feel free to do so, and, and the committee will accept that. Uh, so let's begin with Paralyzed Veterans of America and Rafael Negron with uh, his remarks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Rafael Negro, uh, Paradise Veterans of America, Puerto Rico, Chapter. Thank you to the, uh, to the chairman, the, uh, the commission president, uh, Ms. Gonzalez. We went uh, to the uh, SCI unit, you know, as measure has been taken, how many members could be hospitalized and contact. We are realized we are many who still do not their status. We request help, the physical address, because the directory only has postal, postal address. But the very response was very slow. However, we start visiting those that had their physical address, and we found more than 90% of the, we received no visit from VA uh, uh, hospital after uh, Huracan Maria. We kept uh, visiting our members during the month of November, December, January 2017, and more than 50% of those visits had not received their medication or medical supplies, as diapers, catheters, etc. Our veterans need their medication and medical supplies every day, not having them cause serious complications, even death. We know the problem of access of the road delay, the reopening U.S. Postal Service and the other delivery service. VA uh, Healthcare must have an alternate plan to prevent this from happening again. The VA uh, contact the veterans who have critical medical condition and activate the emergency protocol, but we found that for the other disabled veteran doesn't have the emergency support plan. We as healthcare need to develop a directory simple update system for physical or location address to encourage veterans to confirm their location at least every medical appointment. The VA provides alternatives for medication. That information was not as all veterans. In addition to many of them have problems with the private pharmacies and we are not aware of the service and link with the VA. We need to improve and expand advertising for those alternatives for both veterans and local pharmacies. The VA hospital offers excellent service for all veterans who arrive to the hospital, and we know they work 24 seven to cover the situation that occurred through the uh, satellite clinics. The spatial and unique uh, geographical characteristics of the island, our terrain is full of high mountains, valleys, and coast areas very difficult to access to the principal roads. We have the, uh, a lot of veterans who live two or three hours away to drive through the VA medical center. And now, after the hurricanes, it's more difficult. It's absolutely necessary to improve the satellite clinics service for future emergency and disaster. You got 30 seconds to run up. Okay. We, uh, uh, we know uh, our uh, national organization, PBA, sent a statement for the record to the field hearing, respectfully reaffirm and ratify everything that PBA explained in that, uh, in that statement. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, we're going to have a hearing in just a little bit, and I, I think I've read your testimony um, on the way down. And how, how do you answer, because I'm going to hear, I just am reading the testimony I'm going to hear in about 45 minutes. It says that the, um, the VA Caribbean Health System was able to reach 100% of the 3,000 veterans identified as being members of a vulnerable population, which included veterans experiencing homelessness, those requiring hemodialysis, those dependent on ventilators, those at high risk for suicide, those with severe mental health illnesses, assisted by FEMA, the VA staff utilized ground, air, and sea transplacement to meet with each veteran to confirm his or her well-being. That's exactly the opposite of what you just said. And so my, my question, when we go back to D.C., I've, get to, I've got this very nice report here, but I'm hearing from you who actually went out that that's not what happened. Am I correct? Yes, sir. This is the opposite. When, like, they just went to... Could, could you get up close to my 20 millimeter cannons in my ears? All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when, when, the, when, the, when VA is playing, they reach the old personnel, all, all our, our PBA members. Yes, sir. And when we went to the house, we, as, as a chapter, we found they didn't. That, that's, that, that's our, our concern. Because who who you going to believe? Our, uh, are your fellow veterans or uh, no, to the you. government? That's a different. Because in the report, yes, uh, in, in my particular case, they know I was alive because I went to the hospital. I say, I'm here. They don't miss me. Or or, or, or uh, uh, fellow uh, veterans with disabilities. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to do the Disabled American Veterans Commander Luis Borges. Luis Borges. Uh, but I want to recognize Lourdes Ramos, the chairwoman of the Veteran Affairs Committee in the House. Go ahead. you got three minutes. Mine's gonna be more shorter than that. <laughs> okay, I got a, a couple concerns for the for the committee. It was in the the hospital. It was okay, but OPC is a lack of, of professional health care. That's an orthopedics, it's the psychologist, psychology, and everything. In the last in the last couple of months, I got a follow a, a couple fellow veterans that went to the to mental health and they didn't receive the treatment good over there in the hospital and they went to the private sector in the outside the VA. Bed for a lot of veterans in mental health. And that is the the worst part of the veterans. We got a lot of a lack of providers for the Chan VA. Chan VA for the, our families is very complicated here in Puerto Rico because they, they don't have no personal provider, the, the hospitals are lack of, to get the assets for the families. That the VA and the same VA system, they don't work very well to work with our families too. You know, it's very complicated. Then the, or, or the, then the orthopedics, to get a, a, a walking cane in the OPC, you have to go to the main, to the main hospital in San Juan, maybe takes like a three hour drive to go to Maya, from Maya West to San Juan, to the roads and everything, it's very complicated to, to our fellow veterans. That's the reason the point. Thank you. You still got a minute and a half. I know. <laughs> okay, any questions? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Now we're gonna have the military order of the Purple Heart. Uh, Um, I'd, first of all, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to hear our voice here and uh, some of our concerns that we have in through the VA uh, system that we face here in the Caribbean Islands. Uh, one of the concerns that was brought to me by uh, our, our members of the military of the Purple Heart is uh, after the pass of the hurricane, we lost the power, electricity, communications, and all that blah, blah, blah that happened in Puerto Rico. We are well aware of that. Um, most of the veterans were in, in, left in a position which some of them weren't able to get a generator, get 
uh, a plan B for the situation and all that. And I'm when I'm referring to that, I'm referring to the special clinics, um, people that have uh, sleep apnea and uh, needed their machines, the ventilators and all that. They weren't able to get the proper maintenance of their machine. They weren't able to get a backup system for their machine. Um, many occasions they went to the VA hospital. The clinic turned them away saying, oh, oh, you need to go see the Red Cross. You need to go see FEMA. You need to go see somebody else to take care of the issues. Um, VA system was never prepared for the, um, obviously what happened to us, and, and that's understandable. But after, after months and, and after the past, some of us are still left without power in the island. Some of us are still left without power in the island.